Hello, my name is Roger, and um, I have my partner here, Harry, and we're from Maxed Out PC TV, and um, we're going to be talking about the Mitron device, which is a time-lapse device, and this was sent to us from Mitron, and to review the sort of um, the device of what how capable it is. So the camera that we're using, as you can see in um, the video, is a 5D Mark III, and Harry is there helping me with the software setup. Uh, I can say about this device. This device uh, comes with um, it comes with quite a lot with a little package. It comes with a bag. It comes with a little box, and it comes with a cable. Now the cable provided. Oh, it comes with two cables actually. <laughs> the cable that uh, the cable that you actually need though, because the other cable is exactly the same. The, the cable that you need is the one for your camera. So we're using a 5D Mark III, so it's got a different sort of attachment that you get with the device. Now you have to tell uh, Mitron what kind of cable you need to actually make your camera function. This works on all DSLR cameras, so it works on Nikon and Canon. Um, and I absolutely think this device is brilliant. It really is. Um, you don't really need to have, like, you don't really need too much stuff. You can actually just use the actual box and the device that you get from Mitron, and you just need a DSL camera and your smartphone. A smartphone um, is just so you can actually add the software. The software is absolutely free. It is really well made and it's got presets on there. So you don't, if you're really a beginner like we are when it comes to doing time lapse, it is really, really functional, really good to have. I really, really wanted to go and do time lapses straight away. I even stood outside the back of my house for over four hours changing batteries in the freezing cold just to film the moon. Now, it's not as simple as just filming the moon, is it, Harry? Because uh, you've done um, a different couple of time lapses to what I did. Yeah, well, I was outside a few times for um, the ones you'll see at the end of the video. But we did have a few problems trying to set up the camera to start with. If you've got it on autofocus, by the time the camera has had the chance to focus in, the, the Mitron is then trying to take the next picture, so the camera doesn't actually take the picture. So where it was supposed to have taken 1,800 pictures, we ended up with only about 300 pictures being taken. Yes. So uh, as you can see, there was massive gaps in between, so it, it didn't look very smooth when we played it out. And uh, we also had problems with the camera saving. If, if the quality is too high if like you, in raw so if you've got it shooting in raw format rather than jpeg rather than the jpeg um it can't save it in time so then the same problem happens again that it's missing out pictures where it's supposed to take the 1800 pictures it took 900 pictures because it took half because it couldn't save every other one every other picture it physically cannot cope um, when you do it in raw it's um and also if you're doing nighttime pictures like i was doing of the moon um, it's hard to, you, you, you've got to use the right lens, you've got to use the right focus points, you've got to check all the white balance and everything before you even go ahead and do it. Now, this device is really, really good. Um, me and Harry um, were working so hard to get these time lapses, but for a beginner, you can see for yourself what we've done for a beginner's sort of, uh, a beginner's um, re review for a, a time lapse. So we're really quite proud of what we've done. We also done, well, Harry done a one off a bridge, um, or off the top of a building, I should say, and he done it from, I think around two hours, two and a half hours. Yeah. And you're filming a couple of cars, and then it turned into traffic, and the lights started to get darker, the street lights came on, there was people working in the background, it was beautiful. So um, we ended up putting the software, um, the time lapse, into Premiere Pro because um, the, the software that was recommended by Mitron, we had problems with it. Uh, but we already, we already video editors and we do a lot of photography and all that sort of stuff. So um, all the sorts, all the sorts of problems that you're meant to get with these devices, we hardly really didn't really have many, but. Well, when we did have any problems, we could work them quite simply, quite out. It was quite easy. But um, yeah, I could I could tell a few stories where uh, me and Harry actually I couldn't even work it out. But when I got the device, I thought you could just plug and play it, and and it will start doing it. And yeah, it did start doing it straight away. 
but it was it was not right because you needed to actually download the software, uh, install the software, and obviously go through the presets because we were obviously beginners on that, and and then we had to um, like scroll through with what kind of the presets that we were doing. So we were doing the the night sky, stars, um, a waterfall, or something like that. Um, or clouds, we actually had the presets already there for us. But we, after we started doing a few time lapses, we started to actually get a bit more advanced. It's pretty easy to pick up really quickly. And we started to actually play around with the settings, and then we started to get much better results. Now, all I'm going to say is this device is really good. You don't really need to, um, to spend loads of money. If you've got a DSLR camera, remember the cable. Ask which one, tell them what cable that you need for your camera, and just use your smartphone. The software is completely free, and it is just a brilliant device. So, we're going to talk about RAW and JPEG. Um, now, with Mitron, Mitron uh, obviously the device, the software device is free, um, but what um, Mitron tried to tell people is to use the free software called Picasa. Now, with Picasa gets all your footage, um, the JPEGs or RAW, and it changes the the, um, the like colour and everything with it. It changes the whole spectrum of your pictures. So whatever you went outside and filmed and like took pictures with, it will come out not the same. Now I wouldn't mind making another video because we can talk about this all, all day. Um, basically we can explain to you after being an amateur of uh, using the time lapse device by Mitchell, uh, we can actually explain to you uh, how to set it up and do tutorials and where's good and where's not good. And also, we can tell you that when you set the camera up first, as well, which we didn't know, um, we set it up with a really fast shutter speed. And every time we went, when we went to take a picture, it was. It was taking so many pictures all at once, rather than one picture that was set for. So if it was meant to be set like one picture every three seconds, it was taking 10 pictures every three seconds. So those are the problems we had, but not with the Mitchell product. It's just that we were very amateur at using this device. But as you can see, still through the actual documentary, that we had fun with it and we started to get better and better as we went along. Now, um, with the other cable, that connects straight into your uh, uh, camera, and then everything is, um, was it sends a signal, doesn't it, Harry? Sends a signal yeah, I believe straight through. It sends an electronic pulse down to your camera yeah. to take the picture. So it's literally, the pulse is just like you pressing the camera button. Yeah, definitely. And what I agree, I actually agree with how the device is made. I think it's, they've taken away the phone, they're taking away the, the camera and they're basically saying that you can use this device with any DSLR and any smartphone. And I think this, and you get software for free and if you need help you can just like talk to these people and they'll be happy to like obviously um, help you with your inquiries or any problems that you may be having with this device. I found it really really hard at first, within the first 10 minutes between me and Harry we actually started to troubleshoot the problems that we're having. And it wasn't the device's fault or anything like that. It was just an error from what we're used to doing. And it's not as simple as plugging everything in. You need to go through the presets at first to get familiarized with the actual device. Harry, what is your conclusion, your end thoughts on um, the Mitron device? Well, I think even though we had a few problems to start with, that was easy to troubleshoot. It took us about 10 minutes and we had the whole thing set up. So. Um, but the end product, once you finish that time lapse, is just outstanding. It's uh, it's so easy to set up and it's so easy to to work with. So as you can see, this is uh, going to be our final um, time lapses at the end. So enjoy it, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Max Out PC TV. And thanks for watching.